Amen. And he is the one that we serve. You know the children of Israel, children of Nisha, they go to that place, picking it up from where the praise worship of this morning started. When you read the book of Exodus 3, the praise worship said, he said, God has so many names. So many names. And because God has so many names, Moses didn't know what to call God. When he sent him to go and deliver the children of his own children from the hands of the Egyptians. You know, the, Egyptians, the, the children of Israel were in Egypt for so many years. They were being tortured, being maltreated. They were beaten. No food. They were starving. But Moses, who sought to deliver them, kind of committed a crime and ran away. And then Moses became a shepherd in the bush. Working for his own in-law, taking care of the sheep. And then God said, I've heard the cry of my people. They are in so much agony. They are in so much pain. There is need for there to be a deliverer. He said, Moses, will you go for me? Moses was giving excuses. Just as most Christians do today, when God sends us on an errand, we give excuses. So Moses was giving excuses. And, and he gave so much excuses. He said, he said but the highest of all, I'm in Samara. I can't speak fluently. And the Lord said, Don't worry. I'll give you an oracle. I'll give you a prophet to come with you. Someone who will speak on your behalf. Hallelujah. So, God picked Aaron. He said, Aaron, go with my son. But before then, he said, the Lord have gotten Aaron to speak. But supposing I go there and I tell them that you want, you are not, I'm not sent here to deliver you. They will ask me who sent you. What will I say? In Exodus chapter 3 and verse 14, the Bible says, God said, He said, when you get there, when they ask you, who sent you? He said, tell them the I am that I am. And I love the revelation that, the interpretation that the praise worship I get to it this morning. And because God has so many names, but the I am that I am stood out above all. Because the I am that I am in the situation where you are, she even modernizes. He says it is what it is. Hallelujah. He says in the situation where you are, God is there. Right in the battle that you are fighting now, call him by that situation. He will respond. Amen. You may not live in hunger forever. You live to a point that you have so much. You won't need anything. So what would you call God? Would God cease to be God? You will need God again. Some year. So call him. Call him by his name. Call him the healer. Call him the provider. Call him the up. The, the lift out of my head when you think you are down. When you think you are down, you can say, God, you are am that I am. You are the lifter of my head. You can call him. Again, God will come true for you. We well, bless the name of the Lord. Take the glory. Amen. Thank you, Father. For in every situation in our lives, you are there. That is why we can't compare you to any God. Because the other gods, they have ears, they cannot hear. They have eyes, they cannot see. They have mind that was carved and given to them, but they cannot use it. It's not working, they have less. They can't walk. They have their hands. 
They can't use them. But God, everything that you have given to man is exactly who you are. And if a man can walk, you, God, can walk. Father, I will give you praise. Take all the glory and be thou exalted. In Jesus' name, we worship you. Amen. Shall everybody say Amen. Amen. You are welcome to his presence. I'm not supposed to be preaching today. Anybody with testimony in the house? Testimony? Want to give a testimony? Because by testimony, we, we are overcomers. When you give testimony, you overcome the powers of the enemy. You, 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 you subdue them continually. Hallelujah. So don't be afraid of giving testimony. Testimony gives you the room to enlarge your course. Hallelujah. Because in your testimony, you are telling God, you've done this, you've done this, you've done this, and God is happy. So when you ask him for more, God is willing to come out the more. Hallelujah. Just before I share something with us, I was watching the TV this week. And toward the end of the program, it's, uh, is it this morning? Yes, that was being presented by uh, Amon and Ruth. And we were watching the TV this morning towards, sorry, that was about three days ago, or was it on Friday or thereabout? Uh, it is not shocking because that is what our world has become. But God has given you the power to change it. Because the Bible says in the later time, eh, it said people will deviate, they will run away from the truth. They will begin to worship themselves, they will worship the devil. They will clap hands, they will sing. They will do everything to please the devil. They will walk in ignorance thinking that it is the truth. And then there was this lady that has a dog as a pet. There is nothing wrong when you have a dog. There are lovely animals that God has created to live amongst us humans. And for you to have a dog, you, all you need to do is care for the dog, love the dog, feed the dog when it's needed to be fed, but this lady, it's, it's been happening. But this lady went a step further. What did she do? The lady decided to marry the dog. Did you know that she actually was in that studio, went to the, what do you call that, the green room where they dress. She got dressed, changed from the, the clothes she wore from home. I don't know whether it was ITV that provided the dress for her. She was, they really made her up. They did the makeup so lovely. Only for her to be wedded to a dog. You can see how low humans have become. A dog is an animal you should love. Care for the dog. Whether you marry the dog or not, you will feed the dog anyway. <laughs> so why is it that the reason for which we marry the dog is so that when the dog is hungry, I will feed you? Those were the marriage vow between the dog and the whole human being. When you are hungry, I vow to feed you. So all the while that you have never been married to the dog, have you not been feeding the dog? Then need repentance. That is why you Christians stand your ground and proclaim the God that you serve.
She could not see a man to get married to, but to get married to a dog. May the Lord deliver her in the name of Jesus. Amen. So what, what, she, what does she want to do with the dog? Have intimacy with the dog. Is it? And you could see, you could see the, the presenter of the program, two of them, they were almost exploding in laughter. But they couldn't, they just couldn't, they, 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 everyone said, he said, please just pronounce them. And they pronounced them woman and dog. You wanted the money. Why is it woman and dog? It should not have the woman and husband. But it's a woman and dog. And my sweet lady, Alice, that was present, that was wedding in the beans, the dog and the woman, the, the lady could not hold it. All through the time she was busting out in laughter. She, she couldn't hold it, hold back. This is how low human. The devil has so made the human to, to, to come down too low, so low. Listen, I'm not saying you don't love your dog. Love your dog. But don't go marry your dog. Your dog is not a human being. God wants you to marry. When God created, he didn't create you and a dog to get married. The Bible says everything that God created, he created male and female. So there is a male dog. If that dog is a female, they should go and get, let them wed two dogs. They should get a, a, a male dog and wed them. May the Lord deliver us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Wasted resources, air time that could have been used for better things. Wedding, a woman and a dog. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, this is how much the world that you created has been turned to by the enemies. But we pray God that you will visit this nation again. You will visit this world again. Let your power be released in the name of Jesus. So that human will not marry animals. They are meant to be cared for. The ones that are meant to be eaten are meant to be killed and to be eaten. Not for human to marry them. Father, we thank you because we believe by faith that both the dog and the woman will be delivered in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. And as many that are still walking in that path, we pray for them that their eyes of understanding might be enlightened, that they will no longer walk in ignorance in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. I will be share something with us very quickly. And get ready to give your thanksgiving, to give your... If it's a seed faith, thank God for the month that you are. Listen, this month is a month of new beginning. Newness. Great expectation. Great miracles. I have going to happen. Amen. If only you become faithful. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't put God aside. Always let God be the center of your planning. Amen. Let Him be the center. So from Him, you can move to the right, move to the left, backward, center forward. Let Him be the center. Don't put Him aside. Not when you have planned everything. That is when you now bring God in. No. Let God be the center of that which you are planning. Amen. Hallelujah. If you turn your Bible, I would have loved us to read the whole scripture. But I'm only going to take one verse of the Bible. And I'm going to dwell on that for a while. Hallelujah. I'm going to dwell on that for a while. But before then, 
We will read the verse before the chapter before this this very chapter. First Samuel chapter nine. I will just run through the story. It got to a time there are different dispensation in the Bible. We are in the dispensation of grace now. That's what we are now. So we walk. We are saved by grace. There are other dispensations in the Bible. And there are times when the children of Israel needed a king. And God knows what is best for us. So God will always give us what is best for us. But sometimes out of ignorance, we think what we have is not good enough. But God knows. And so the children of Israel, we are demanding for a king. They wanted a king. So they began to ask God, give us a king. Let's have a king. Let's have a king. And the children of Israel, God decided to honor them, to give them the king. God sent Samuel to go and anoint Saul as a king to them. So he was anointed and God gave some instructions as he sent Samuel along. He gave instructions as to what to be done. You following me? That is chapter 9. In chapter 10, let's take it, let's read it from the beginning to about verse 11 or 12. If you have the amplifier, you can read it from the amplifier. Do you have the amplifier? Yeah. Let's read from the amplifier. In first Samuel chapter 10, the Bible says, Then Samuel took the vial of oil. He was to anoint Saul as a king to rule over the children of Israel. And so the Bible said, Then Samuel took the vial of the oil and poured it on Saul's head and kissed him and said, Has not the Lord anointed you to be prince over his inheritance, Israel? When you have left me today, you will meet two men because he has he's been anointed he pronounced a king so this is where the instruction that God gave to Samuel to give to Saul he says so when you left me today you will meet two men by Rachel Rachel's tomb in the territory of Benjamin of Zelzah and they will say to you the donkeys you sought. Now, before I go further, the donkeys were the donkeys of Saul's father that we are missing. So Saul's father, Kit, I think Kit or so, sent him to go look for them. So he called his servant, let's go look for them. So they searched everywhere. They could not find the donkeys. So they were going to give up. So Saul said to the servant, I said, Lest our father will become worried. Let's go back. Let's stop searching for the donkeys. Let's go back. But before they go, Saul said, But there is a prophet in this city. Peradventure, if we go to that prophet, if we explain what we want, the prophet will tell us where to find this. 
donkeys. These animals that our father has asked us to go and look for. But then Saul considered one thing. Because of familiarity and ignorance sometimes, a lot of Christians, they are not following the rules and the principles that God has laid down in the Bible. But let's read something that Paul said in chapter, chapter 9, verse 6. I will take it from verse 3. Also that you, you understand what I'm doing. Let's go to chapter 9. Let's read it from verse 1. Through to verse 6, 7, 8. And see what Paul, uh, Saul said. He said, there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, son of Abiel. The son of Zerah, the son of Bacharat, the son of Abia, a Benjamin. So you can see that Saul has so many fathers. A mighty man of wealth and valor. Kish had a son named Saul, a choice young man and handsome a choice young man and handsome God chose him to be anointed among all the Israelites there was not a man more handsome than he he was a head taller than any of the people Hallelujah. A head taller than any of the people. The donkeys of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. Kish said to Saul, Take a servant with you and go. Look for the donkeys. And they passed through the hill country of Ephraim. And the land of Shalisha, but did not find them. Then they went through the land of Shalim and the land of Benjamin, but did not find them. And when they came to the land of Zoph, Saul said to his servant, Come, let us return. Lest my father stop worrying about the donkeys and become concerned about us. Verse number six. The servant said to him, Behold, now there is in this city a man of God, a man held in honor. All that he says surely comes true. Now let us go there. Perhaps he can show us where we should go. Verse 7. Then Saul said to his servant that if we go, what shall we bring the man? Who was in the city? Who was in the city? And he responded, Who was in the city? It was a man of God. Somewhere. He said, if we go, this man will tell us. But see what Saul said. Saul said, this was a servant suggestion. And Saul said, but if we go, what are we going to give to the man of God? Let's read on. Still there's seven. He said the bread in our sight is gone. It means it's gone. The bread is bad. We can't offer that to the man of God. And there is no gift for the man of God. What have we? Verse 8. The servant replied, I have here a water of a shekel, shekel of silver. I will give that to the man of God to tell us a 
our way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 9. Formerly in Israel, when a man went to inquire, inquire of God, he said, Come, let us go to the seer. For he that now called the prophet was formerly called what? A seer. And in our today's modern life, in our dispensation, they are the pastors. Hallelujah. They are the pastors. He says, so when, what do we go to give? If we go to the man of God, what do we do? What do we give to him? Do you know that there are a lot of us? See, you don't go and visit the man of God empty-handed. I want you to know that. Because modernization has made things, people are doing the wrong thing, thinking that they are doing the right thing. You don't go to a man of God empty-handed. No matter how small, if you know it's a man of God, don't go to a man of God empty-handed. Whomever that man of God is. You must go bearing a gift, something to give to a man of God. It's an honor. Hallelujah. I just thought that I should draw your attention to that. That is not what I want to share with you. But it's important. Don't ever go to a man of God empty handed. Most of us have become so psychedelic in our thinking, in our behavior, that we just throw and even tap the man of God's back. Although he's a boy boy to us. No. Give honor. Honor the man of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Now let's go to chapter number 10 where I was reading from. Before I went back there. Chapter number 10. Let's read from verse 1. Then Samuel took the vial of the oil and poured it upon Saul's head and kissed him and said, Has not the Lord anointed you to be priest over his heritage Israel? When you have left me today, you will meet two men by Rachel's tomb in the territory of Benjamin and Zanzibar, and they will say to you, The donkeys you saw are found, and your father has quite carried about them and is anxious for you. Ask him, What shall I do about my son? The three. Then you will go on from there, and you will come to the oak of Talbot. And three men going up to God are better. We meet you there. One carrying three kids. Another three loaves of bread. And another carrying what? A skin bottle of wine. They will greet you and give you two loaves of bread. Which you shall accept from their hand. After that, you will come to the hill of God, where the garrison of the Philistine is. And when you come to the city, you will meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with harp, tambourine, flutes, and lyre. Before them, before them, prophesying. Verse 6. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you mightily, and you will show yourself to be a prophet with them, and you will be turned into another man. Verse 7. When these signs meet you, do whatever you find to be done, for God is with you. Ladies and gentlemen, for God is with who? With you. Verse 8. You shall go down before me to Gilgal, and behold, I will come down to you to offer burnt offerings and to sanctify peace offerings. You shall wait seven days until I come to you and show you what you shall do. Verse 9. And when so 
had gone in his back to leave Samuel. God gave him another heart. And all these signs came to pass that day. Just hang on there. That verse 9. God gave him another heart. When God is preparing you for a miracle, He doesn't just prepare you one sided, He prepares you fully. So God gave him another heart. He said, Every sign that was told him by Samuel all came to pass. All that God has spoken concerning you, they are coming to pass. In this new month of newness, in this new month of great expectation, all that the Lord has promised you, they are coming to pass. In the name of Jesus. Verse number 10. The Bible says, When they came to the hill, give them. Behold, a band of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God came mightily upon him, and he spoke under divine inspiration among them. Verse 11 is where I'm going. He spoke. This is where everything that the Lord has said. Get Samuel the instruction to give to Saul. And this is verse 11. Verse 11. And he says, Hallelujah. And when all who knew Saul let me read verse 10 again so that when I read you will understand. Verse 10 says, When they came to the hill, give them. Behold, a man, a band of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God came mightily upon him, and he spake under what? Under divine inspiration amongst them. Verse 11 says, And when all who you saw before saw that he spoke by inspiration among the schooled prophets, the people said one to another, What has come over him? Who is nobody but the son of Kish? He saw also amongst the prophets. Ladies and gentlemen, may I announce to you, when the Lord is true with you this month, hmm. those who knew you before, they will ask, what has happened to you? Amen. The new son, the new son as the son of Kish, just as the, the son, the new Jesus, as the son of Joseph, the carpenter. So when Jesus was doing miracles, nobody believed him. He said, will anything good come out of Nazareth? Will anything good come from there? But ladies and gentlemen, God is preparing for a miracle. Amen. I said, God is preparing you for a miracle. Amen. God who knew you before when they see you, they will recognize you anymore. Amen. Because my God is finished with you, you will be revealed. You will reject God's glory. You will His blessing. That when God is done with you, those who knew you, they will say, Who is this? What has happened to you? That is what will be their comment. In the name of Jesus. He said, What has happened? He said, But we know Saul. We know him to be the son of Kish. When did he join the, the prophet to begin to prophesy? When did he become a good man? Ladies and gentlemen, a change is coming your way. I say a change is coming your way. In the name of Jesus. Listen, people. The ways of the Lord are past finding. They are past finding. They are so deep. They are so deep, and I mean it that they are so deep that no one can fathom it. So also his love, his love is so wide, you can't, you can't embrace it all. It's so 
deep that you cannot reach it. It's so high that you can't reach it. That is God's love. Also, His way. That is why He says, "As the heavens are higher above." Hallelujah. In Isaiah 55, verse 8 to 13, this is what the Bible says. Hallelujah. Today, when you go, when you leave this place, people will ask, they will ask you, "What has happened to you?" What has happened to you? Because that is the title of my message. What has happened to you? Because you are not the person you used to be before. You are not in the same category anymore with them. Amen. God has uplifted you. Yes. I said God has promoted you. Yes. God has uplifted you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. They will ask you, what has happened? When you left home this morning, we saw you when you left home. You see, when Moses was going up to the mountain to receive the ten tablets, the ten commandments, the new be when he was going. But when God was finished with Moses, when Moses came down, nobody could recognize him. I said they would not recognize you. Those that have taken your name to be a trouble before. And when they see you, they will say, no, this one is different. Hey, this one is different. This one is different. Because the fire that is coming from you will become so much that the powers of the enemy will be able to put you down. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The new Moses, when Moses was coming down, they could not behold him. I said the enemy would not be able to behold him. Ah, the powers of the witches and wizards will not be able to put you down. Amen. Those who look down on you, who rubbish you, who want to rub shoulder with you, you will climb on top of them. You will use them as a tool to walk upon your destination. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. In Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 through to 13, the Bible says, it said, for my God, are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, your way, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from the heavens and return not there again, but water. So shall my word be that going out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void without producing any effect, unless that it, it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it shall prosper in the things wherein though I send it. The things I send it. The Bible went on to say. For ye shall go out from the spiritual exile caused by sin and evil in the homeland will show and be led forth by your leader and the Lord himself and his word with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing and all the trees of the field shall clap your hands. All the trees of the field shall clap what? Their hands. They shall clap their hands. He said, instead of the horn, shall come forth up the cypress tree. And instead of the prayer, shall come up the mantle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name of renown. For so an everlasting sign. You will jubilate. I say you will celebrate. Amen. And in the morning, to this end, oh, the Bible says, we shall not be cut off. Amen. When God has done what He will do in your life, you will never be the same. And many who wish you death, they will say, We sought to kill Him, we sought to kill her. 
But it is God above us. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Amen. Man's way are not God's way. When a man thinks he's bringing you down, God has just started lifting you up. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. He says in Isaiah, Isaiah 23 verse 19, He said, Behold, I will do a new thing. In this month of new beginning, in this month of newness, in this month of great expectation, in this month of rejoicing, the Lord said, I will do a new thing. Amen. Now he shall spring forth. I said, ladies and gentlemen, hey, Karabasha, it is your season of newness. Amen. I said, it is your season of newness. Amen. That which the Lord is said to do is bringing forth in your life. Amen. And it shall become very new. It shall be new. It shall be new. And he said he will even make way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. When you think all is lost, all hope is gone, everything is ended, God is about to start something new in your life. I said he's about to start something new in your life. And the Lord said in the book of Samuel, chapter 3, verse 11, and the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which point the ears of everyone that hear it shall think of the thing that God is said to do in your life. When your neighbor hear it, they will rejoice with you. Amen. I said they will rejoice with you. Amen. Listen, this is our month of rejoicing. Amen. Rejoicing will not cease in your home. Amen. It will not cease in your life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. What has happened to you? It's an expression that expresses surprises and shock. It does not make it us positively. But for you, ladies and gentlemen, can I announce to you that your story is changing from negativity to positivity? Amen. I said the Lord is turning every negative situation around. Every downward trend in your life. Hey, Karaba, and as many who are trying to mess up your life, trying to mess up your destiny, is taking a different dimension for your upward upliftment. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, I said the Lord is set to uplift you. Amen. 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 There is no more sorrow, no more pain, no more struggling. Ah, your struggles are over. Amen. Your struggles are over. Amen. The days of sorrows are over. Amen. The Bible says, weeping may endure for the night, but joy coming in the morning. When the enemy see you, they will say, what has happened to you? Something good has changed in your life. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Listen, I've come here to announce to you today that your failures are turning to success. Amen. Your failures are turning to success. Amen. Your failures are turning to success. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Because until the enemy said, Ah, what has happened to you? You won't know where you are. Wow. Let the enemy, let the child, I say, Ah, Ah, what has happened to you? It's because the miracle you have experienced and that you are going to experience will be greater than the plan of your evil plan against your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Listen, ladies and gentlemen. Your defeats are turning to victory. Amen. I say your defeats are turning to victory. Amen. Your defeats are turning to victory. Amen. Your defeats are turning to victory. Amen. I say somebody is about to announce your blessings. Amen. Do you know that? Do you, have you ever wondered why is it that God cannot praise himself? God can't promote himself. It has to be somebody to promote him. God will praise himself. Not that he cannot do it, but somebody has to do it. 
If you tell people who you are, they will say you are bragging. But ladies and gentlemen, the enemy that sought you down for the analysis of your victory, the analysis of your blessings, the analysis of your breakthroughs, in the name of Jesus, come on, I tell somebody, it's analysis of your breakthrough. It's analysis that change that is happening in your life. Somebody is announcing the miracles that are happening in your life. In the name of Jesus, the prosperities, the promotions that are happening in your life, somebody is announcing it. I said, somebody is announcing it. He says, such, those who want you down can no longer hold it. You know why they were announcing it? Because they wanted you down there. But when they saw the upliftment, they couldn't hold it. They said, I am tired. I'm willing to let it go. I said, you have been set free. 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 When the enemy have tried all they could, and they could not lock you there, when the enemy, when they sought to kill Jesus, they said by killing him, nailing him on the cross, that was the end. They nailed him on the cross. They saw a miracle. They said, I, which means this man is not finished yet. Let's take him and put him in the grave. They took him and put him in the grave. They didn't stop there. He said so that he would not come out again. They got a big stone and blocked it. The enemy will always look for the impossible way to make sure that that which God has said to do in your life will not come true. But the more they try, the more God is opening the door. I said the more God is opening the door. The more God is opening the door. And when they have tried and tried and tried, they could not succeed. They said we better let him go. And Jesus, the Bible said Jesus lifted up from that grave. You remember the children of Israel? Shed up nature and Abednego. They said we are going to destroy their destiny. We will put them into fire. Let them burn to ashes. Let them burn to ashes. They threw them there into the fire. Right in the fire. God made an air condition. Right in the fire. Where you are feeling the heat. God is feeling an air condition for you. It is not a manual air condition. It is a spiritual air condition. That is turning all your soul around. It's turning your blessing around. They are coming around to their fullness. In the name of Jesus. And when the true children measure and Abednego in that fire and they try to make sure that they don't come out, they saw a fourth man. I said, that fourth man has come to bless you today. That fourth man has come to open the door for you today. That fourth man has come to open the door for you today. He's come to open the door for you today. That fourth man is in your life. They try. They try. And they try. And Nebuchadnezzar said, Are you sure you hit that of the fire seven times over? He said, Yes, we did. He said, Bring them out. He said, Bring them out. When the enemy that sought to kill you cannot kill you anymore, he will say, We have released you. We have set you free. We have now let you go. Go and celebrate. Go and celebrate. Go and return. Go and celebrate. And right from that day, Nebuchadnezzar declared, he said, the God of this man is the God that you all must serve. Because their own God has failed them. Wherever they took your name to have failed them. Wherever they took your pictures to have failed them. And they become out running like madmen. They become out running like mad women. In the name of Jesus. I said, God is setting you free. God is setting you free. God is setting you free. In the name of Jesus, your life will never be the same again. Your life will never be the same again. Your life will never be the same again. In the name of Jesus, and when the enemy will see you again, you have changed. You have changed. That is when they will say, Ah, what has happened to you? And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Come and rise up with your feet. Come on, let's celebrate the Lord. Let's celebrate Him. Let's celebrate Him. Let's clap. Let's clap for His glory. Let's shout for His glory. For the victory is ours. God has done it and 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 done it. 
God authority, authority, authority. In the name of Jesus. Man, the revolution. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In this month of newness, in this month of great expectation, your heart desire will be fulfilled. Your heart desires will be fulfilled. Your heart desires will be fulfilled. Your heart desires will be fulfilled. In the name of Jesus, you will never be the same again. Blessed be your name, O God. Come on, say thank you to the Lord. Say thank you to Him. Just bless Him. Just bless Him. Just bless Him. Ah, bless Him. Say, God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I exalt you. I'm no longer the same. Hey, they will ask, Ah, what has happened to me? Ah, what has happened to you? I so shall it be. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We worship you.
in the hands of the enemy. Yes. Don't destroy us. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We exalt you. For being faithful in all things, even in our, our, our unfaithfulness. You are still faithful to us. To keep us, to protect us.